Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation from Romania. We have 27 to the power x minus 8 to the power x divided by 18 to the power x minus 12 to the power x equals 19 over 6. And we're going to be looking for x values. I'm going to show you the solution method and then also we're going to take a look at a graph, which is kind of cool. All right, let's get started. Obviously, here we can cross multiply and, you know, kind of struggle with this equation a little bit, but there's a better way to do it. So I'm going to use substitution. You know, it's one of my favorite methods, maybe the only one. So I'm going to go ahead and replace 3 to the power x with a and 2 to the power x with b. And that implies the following. 27 to the power x basically can be written as 3 to the power x cubed. So we can write this as a cubed. And then 8 to the power x can be written as 2 to the x to the third, which is b cubed. And then we can do the same thing at the bottom, 18 and 12. 18 to the x can be written as 2 times 3 to the second, because 2 times 9 is 18. And then you can go ahead and distribute that. And notice that 3 to the power 2x can be written as 3 to the power x squared. Therefore, this is equivalent to b times a squared. And we can do something similar for 12, but this time it's just going to be 2 squared times 3 to the x, and then that turns into 2 to the 2x times 3 to the x, because 2 times x is multiplied. And then we can write this as 2 to the x to the second times 3 to the x, and 2 to the x is b, remember that. This turns into b squared a. So all of this, we can basically plug it into our original equation right here. Let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. So if you replace, if you make all the replacements, uh, 27 to the power x obviously are gonna be, is going to be replaced with a cubed, and then you have a to the x, which is b cubed, and all of that is divided by 18 to the x, which is b a squared minus b squared a. Now this expression might look a little confusing. It's cubic, and this is equal to 19 over 6, of course. The numerical value doesn't change with the substitution, but notice that we can factor both the top and the bottom. How? First of all, by using difference of two cubes, we can write the top as follows. And then the bottom one has a common factor of BA, and inside the parentheses that gives us A minus B, which is really cool because A minus B cancels out. We just gotta be careful here because when you're canceling out something, you're basically dividing by that, or you have to make sure it's not zero. So in this case, a minus b does not equal 0, which means a does not equal b. And remember, a and b, 3 to the x does not equal 2 to the x, which means x does not equal 0. So at the end, if we end up getting a 0, we're not going to accept it. All right, so let's make sure we establish that. And now let's solve the resulting equation, which is quadratic, by the way. Let's go ahead and distribute. We get 6a squared plus 6ab plus 6b squared equals 19ba, which is the same as ab, by the way. You can go ahead and subtract 19ab from 6ab, and that gives you minus 13ab. And guess what? It makes this expression factorable. Uh, you can use trial and error or the x method or the quadratic formula. For example, one of the things you can do is since this is a homogeneous equation, you can replace a with kb and then plug it in and solve for k, so on and so forth. We know that a and b uh, are not going to be zero because 2 to the x and 3 to the x can never be 0, right? Okay, so we can find the solutions that way. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to give you the factors. The factors are going to look like 2a minus 3b and 3a minus 2b. And if you distribute, you're going to notice that we get negative 13ab from here. Trial and error will give you the solution like I said earlier, or you can use the x method, break it down in so many different ways. Easy, right? Hopefully. Now, what does this give me? It gives me two equations. First of all, 2a minus 3b is equal to 0, which means 2a is equal to 3b. Let's go ahead and back substitute. Remember, a is 3 to the power x. So 2 times 3 to the power x equals 3 times 2 to the power x. So that's kind of like a weird expression. But if you think about it, you'll probably realize, hey, x equals 1 works because 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. But is that the only solution? Let's go ahead and... Uh, kind of put it in a nicer form. I can divide both sides by 2 to the x and 2, 
then I can put it in this form. From here, I can basically write it as three to the power, three halves to the power x equals three halves. And from here, I can safely say that x equals one is the only solution because this is an increasing function. It's exponential and it's only gonna intersect the horizontal line at one point. So x equals one is the only solution that comes from here. Of course, we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and check at the end, but let's go ahead and look at the other case. The other case is, uh, gonna come from here, set this equal to zero. We set this equal to zero now. 3a equals 2b, and I can allow me to make the joke, 2b or not 2b, that is the problem. And a is three to the power x. So we, we kind of get a different situation here because the powers of twos and threes get together and they combine. So we get three to the power x plus one equals two to the power x plus one. It's diff a little different from the first case. And how can I solve this problem? Think about it like a power of three and a power of two, and they're equal. <laughs> that can only happen if uh, the exponents are zero because with logs, if you have different powers, obviously that can happen, but when they're the same, there's no way uh, this is gonna work. So, but let's go ahead and uh, look at it uh, in a more rigorous way. So we can kind of write it like this, three over two to the power x plus one equals one. And from here we can safely say that the exponent must be zero, x plus one equals zero, and that implies x equals negative one as the other solution. Like I said earlier, uh, first, I said that I was gonna introduce the solution methods, which I did, and then I'm gonna show you the graph. But before we do the graph, allow me to uh, present a real quick uh, different approach for this. Uh, instead of doing, th doing this, you can also do the same thing that we did before. So kind of put these two together, three over two to the power x. And on the other side, if you divide both sides by three, you're gonna get two thirds. And notice that two thirds can be written as the reciprocal of three halves. So that is three halves to the power negative one. And since the bases are equal, then exponents also have to be equal, which implies that x equals negative one. All right, great, so different ways to approach the problem, but we end up with two solutions. So before I present you the graph, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check my solutions in the original. This is not a necessary step, but uh, it might be a good idea to check your work sometimes in case you made a mistake, right? Sometimes you're taking a test and you realize when you plug in, it just doesn't work. And isn't that awesome, like when you're able to correct your mistakes? So I highly recommend that. Anyways, x equals one is gonna give us straightforward 19 over six. So that's kind of cool because uh, 27 minus eight is 19 and 18 minus 12 is six. So that's cool. X equals one is straightforward, but what about negative one? And isn't that kind of surprising when you plug in a negative one, everything is gonna be flipped and this is still gonna be true? Is it always like that? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, can we safely say that if x equals one is a solution, x equals negative one is always a solution. Definitely you can check and argue the oddness and evens. Anyways, I talked too much. So let me go ahead and plug in, oopsies. Uh, let me go ahead and plug in a negative one and that's gonna give me one over 27 minus one over eight divided by one over 18 minus one over 12. And here you can kind of write this as eight times 27. Oops, I'm supposed to subtract here. Eight minus 27 over 27 times eight and that's gonna be 12 minus 18 over 18 times 12. Okay, great, so let's go ahead and flip everything. This is gonna give us negative 19 over 27 times eight. The reason why I don't simplify is because I'm gonna cancel this out. And I'm definitely gonna uh, simplify this, so we can go ahead and get rid of the ne negatives. And notice that um, 18 times 12, what is 18 times? Okay, 27 times eight is, um, 216 and 18 times 12 is also 216. So they just cancel out, leaving us with the same answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see what that looks like. And I think you'll be surprised. Uh-oh, isn't that interesting that we kind of get like a, it's not a parabola, but it looks like a parabola. It's kind of interesting. It is symmetrical. Um, it has some, you know, oddness and evenness to it. You can talk about it, but this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.